Yo, what's up? It's me, your girl, Chris Kelly, the queen of Dutty Pop, and it's all about ill fame mag. You don't know nothing. Turn up from long time. Your girl, Chris Kelly, says so. Chew. You're the type of person I always wanted. College shops like a boss, no cost, what people out wanted. Pushing on my hips like I used to get. Took me off the other girls like I'm with him. What's up, everybody? Tanae here with Ill Fame Mag, and I am here with a special guest, Miss Chris Kelly. Hey. What's going on? What's up? What's up? Now, you just hit the stage. Nice performance. How how was that feel for you? You know, it was good. Charlotte was turned up. I love it. The ladies were turned. Even before, while I was walking on the stage, they were like, oh, Chris, go. So they were already turned. I was looking forward to it because I heard that it was going to be turned. And I'm like, yo, I'm going to take it there now. So it was it was a lot of fun on stage. Well, now, if you all haven't heard, she does have an accent. So you're yep. from Jamaica. Yeah. <laughs> Jamaica, man. Yeah. So you lived in Atlanta. You live in Atlanta, but you're from Jamaica. Why Atlanta? You know what? I've always wanted to, well, put it this way. I was in Jamaica, always based in Jamaica, but I felt the need to move in 2011. Exactly to this month, it's been five years. Wow. And um, I, every time I did research on who did this record, who produced that, who wrote that, it was somebody in Atlanta. So I was like, you know what? And it, the cost of living isn't as high as L.A. or New York. Sure. And I didn't want to really go to Miami because Miami was... A lot of Jamaicans. I kind of wanted to just do something completely different, so something that was out of the box. I'm like, if I'm going to go to Miami, why not just stay in Jamaica? <laughs> like, It's literally like an extension of Jamaica. So I wanted to work with new people, people I've never worked with before. And I made the move to Atlanta because we link, I linked up with Block mm -hmm. online, actually. And I was like, yo, I need to move to, you know, I'm planning on moving to Atlanta. And he was like, oh, for real, you know, I live in Atlanta. I was like, yeah, that's what I'm telling you. <laughs> so... Yeah. With the community, the, yeah, we connected like that, and I moved up literally a month after we spoke, and I've been working, been the first lady of Black House, Black ENT ever since. Wow. Whew, that's amazing. That's crazy. First mm -hmm. lady. Mm -hmm, yeah. Oh, my gosh. So how long have you been doing music? Like, how? when did you know that music was your love? Well, I, you know, I always knew music was my love. I was kind of different growing up where I was, like, the little girl that – Instead of watching cartoons on a Saturday morning, I was watching MTV, you know, like watching all the music videos and trying to like memorize songs. And yeah. I remember, I remember, but I thought it was, I thought doing music was natural because I was such a young kid. I was two years old singing, so I thought everybody could do it. But um, I always knew it. My, I remember my, one of my first memories were, was when my parents gave me a, uh, for my Christmas present. They would give me the dolls and stuff, but what I really loved was the first Mariah Carey album on a cassette oh, tape. Wow. And I, I literally took it, I tore the wrapper off, I played it all day, and by the end of the night, on Christmas night, I knew word for word every song. So that's when I guess my parents realized I think this is what you want to do. <laughs> so it's crazy. That's an amazing story. Now, you are with MMG mm -hmm. Digital and Block ENT. Mm -hmm. Now, talk about that. How is it working with, with Ross and being around Ross? Like, what is that experience like? The big belly rude boy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been a pleasure. Ross is like my big brother, you know. It's, it's just he, he, he believes in my, my, my passion for music. He believes in my talent. And, and that's an honor because I remember growing up, not, not even growing up, but like right before moving from Jamaica, mm -hmm. if you asked me which rapper I'd love to work with, obviously I would have said Ross. You know, yeah. It's just crazy, kind of surreal when, you, when I sit back in a room and I'm having conversations with the person who I've always wanted to work with. You know? It just show you that anything is possible mm -hmm. as long as you dream. You dream big and you go for it. You know? yeah. So and, it's crazy. And we say that like it's nothing, like just drink, but it's really it's real. Really real. Like yeah. you have to imagine everything and go for it. Now, uh, does he bring Wingstop to the studio or anything? <laughs> <laughs> Have you tasted them lemon pepper wings? The lemon pepper. Listen, I, you know it's so funny you say that because I'm not a fan of lemon pepper at all. Well. But Wingstop lemon pepper wings, boy, <laughs> they taste so good. And every time we're at the house, there's oh, I'm trying to be on a diet, though, so I'm trying to eat right. I'm trying to do good. And every time I'm in the studio at his house, I'm it's like, really okay, cool. I'm bringing my baked chicken, and then everybody's <laughs> over there tearing the lemon pepper up. So, of course, I have some. Oh you know, like the lemon pepper is off the chain. Awesome. That's crazy. Now, song "Me and You" with Ross, amazing, crazy song sampling. Talk about that. How did that record come about? Well, it came about because um, I did, I did. We had the idea of this song from years ago, 
and Gorilla Zoe was on the record, but I wanted to do it. It was more his record, and I wanted to do it as because it was owned by Block anyway. So I was like, you know what? I want the record. Let's see if we could put on some more verses on it instead of me just being the hook. Mm -hmm. So that's why a lot of people confuse because when they do their research, they're like, hold on, but it's, there's a record called Me and You mm -hmm. with the same hook with Zoe on it. Mm -hmm. So I'm just clarifying why that happened. It's because nothing against Zoe or anything, but we literally linked up with Ross in recent times and we had the idea of really going full force with the record. Mm -hmm. The producer at the time lost the files for the record, so we had to remake everything. Another producer remade everything. So, cut a long story short, we, my producer and I, JRL, he did over the beat. I just sang over the hook and we wrote the verses. And then at that time, we're like, yo, it would be kind of dope if we put Ross on it. It would be crazy since of the new collab between me and Ross. Mm -hmm. So that's how it came about if anybody's confused. How come she got two <laughs> things going on? So I'm clarifying that right now. But um, at the time, I was thinking... He ain't gonna jump on the record. I mean, it says Ross. What you mean? The okay. next day, Block called me. You ain't checked your email? So normally when Block calls me ecstatic like that, I'm like, oh, it's a money call. It's a, <laughs> what's going on? Let me check my email. When I checked it, I heard his voice at the front, and I was like, I was blown away because everything I've been working for from leaving Jamaica with nothing and coming up here with a dream, mm -hmm. that's it. That dream is worth more money than anything. So when I came up here doing that and then I heard the verse, I was blown away. I was like, God is good, boy. She got it. Rose. <laughs> now, were you nervous about that sampling? Because, you know, it was the Mary J, the Method Man. I was more nervous on uh, trying. I wasn't really nervous, but I was more concerned and focused on the delivery on my part because okay. it's a classic record. Um, love one of my favorite records of all time. Mm -hmm. So it was amazing for the opportunity to do that, but I knew I had to do it right. right. And first and foremost, I was more concerned of will Ross like it. <laughs> you understand? I was like, we trying to make him love it because this would be great for my career if he jumps on it. Right. Then when he jumped on it, I was like, and he was like, yo, it's dope, it's hot. I kind of started to get more confidence. Like, yo, people feel seem like they like it because you know when you touch a classic, people are very critical with they that. Are. So I was like, if you're going to do it, though, we got to do it right. We got to do it because when you think about the new generation, like 12-year-old kids, they've never even heard the method. Mm -hmm. They've never even heard that. So when they hear my version, they don't even know there has been a version of method, yeah. a version they, of they Marvin. They, the they don't even know. So mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's fresh to everybody, I think, and it's catchy. People love it. I think I do bring my Jamaican flair to it. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really put a lot of pressure I just wanted it to sound right mm -hmm. that's all I just I was just like let's it, let it sound right and hopefully people mess with it and they they've been messing with it and we haven't even done a video for it yet and the love wow. has been crazy so you got a, a great response that's what's up that's definitely what's up now is there anybody that you want to work with of course you know I have to throw in Rihanna in there any any uh would you want to work with her I mean you all are you know yeah, from and of course, I want to work with Rihanna. I would love to do that. You know, that any you know, I I have big respect for Rihanna coming from the Caribbean and doing this. She's a super duper mega star. She can't even get no higher than that. You know, it's big props to her for doing that. It shows me that I can do it. So you know, I would love that would be a dream come true. I'd love to work with Damon Marley. I would love to work with Gwen Stefani. There's a whole bunch of people. Yeah. Yeah. You know, she's going on tour now. Mm -hmm. And I would love Eve. to open too for her. <laughs> if you watching Gwen, hey. Yeah. You know, she loves like she loves Jamaica. And mm -hmm. She call her son Kingston. That's where I'm from. Oh wow. And she loves reggae music. And she works with a lot of reggae artists. So I'm hoping one day, possible Gwen. Call me. Yeah, call, call my people. <laughs> call Block. <laughs> Have other people call your people. Right. <laughs> now talk about Third World. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. Amazing. First of all, let's just talk about why would you name it that? Well, you know, I'm from a third world country, and I'm in a first world country. Mm -hmm. I wanted to bring my world to yours. And I'm working with Block for the last five years. I've been doing projects. I've been doing mixtapes, EPs, and whatever. But this one is my baby. This is the, the one that I'm really proud of because I fine-tuned my sound in this in this project yeah. so I wanted for y'all to or whoever listens to it that don't even know what Jamaica is about to feel like you're there I wanted to take you all there and it's kind of challenging to do that when you only have it's an EP it's not an album so I really only have the choice of having like seven songs on it right. I did over 300 songs for it so it was hard it was hard it was work I've been working on this project for two years so people were like when are you gonna drop it when big up to Hype Williams he a and the project, mm -hmm. and he definitely steered me in the right direction in terms of do this, do it a certain way, attack the sound a certain way, 
that will make your people and people up here accept it. Mm -hmm. And it's a fine line between having your people back you and not sell out and still be original. You understand? So it, it, it's kind of funny, but we had the sound unlocked. When you hear the songs that we, I performed tonight, Murder Them, that's a crowd pleaser. Mm -hmm. If you want to know what Dutty Pop is, that's the song that, that explains exactly what Dutty Pop is. And that was idea was given to me from Hype as well. Like, you need to do this record. You need to do... So he's very passionate about it. So a lot of people don't know he and are the project. So big up to Hype for that. Wow. Now talk about Jamaica a little bit. I've never been. I want to go so bad. I've never been. But just talk about how it is over there. Like the crime, yeah. love, men, dating. Um, that's what you said family that's what i talk about in the ep i talk about the good the bad and the ugly like every part of it even though it's just like seven songs i talk about different aspects of it i talk about the rude gals i talk about the shatas i talk about the crime i talk about talk about the nice beaches i talk about the rasta man smoking herb i talk about love I talk, you know I, I hit on everything i talk about my dream when you listen to the ultra of the of the ep called uptown girl the reason why that song was important to me because jamaica is a class prejudice country it's not really color prejudice it's a place where if you're from uptown people look down on downtown and downtown look mm -hmm. It's funny, so and I'm from Uptown, but I don't act like it. When you say you're from Uptown, people think that you're saying you're better than people. Oh. But I can't help where I was born. Right. But I don't act like that. Yeah. So I don't like when people ask me, so which what part of Kingston are you from? Because I already know why you're asking me that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you think I think I'm better than you, and that's not the case. I have friends with everybody in Jamaica. And when you get to know me, you realize, oh, she ain't nothing like that Uptown, the Uptown Girls. I did a record called Uptown Girl because... That's me, and that's where I'm from. Right. And I was embracing that because people don't embrace where they're from. Mm. So that's why I did the record, because it was real. And when you listen to it, you'll get into why I did that as an outro, because I wanted to leave y'all wanting more for the album. So when you hear it and you hear me talking about my dad used to tell me, I used to, look, I used to wake up looking through my window every day dreaming of something bigger. I talk about all of that, so it's crazy. That's amazing. Wow. You're different. I love your vibe. I mean, it just seems like just sitting here talking to you and, and kind of studying you a little bit, you, you don't try to fit in. No, no. You're different. And it's like it's hard to catch that with these artists these days. Everybody's selling out. You know, I may not be new in terms of the time I've been in the game, but I'm new to people who don't know me. So I just feel like because I'm, I guess my experience has taught me that, like, why would I come up here to be – a Britney Spears or a Rihanna or a Beyonce I love them but there's no way why would you listen to me if you can get them so I feel like if I'm gonna set a, a path for even other artists to really stand out don't fit in the mold of what any label will tell you to do be you because that's when you'll be the best you understand so that's why I'm proud of this project because I feel like my work for five years working with block we've we we've We've tapped on every kind of sound in the studio. Every, we've done R&B records. We've done it. We tried everything. Yeah. And it every time comes full circle right back to just be yourself. Give me a record that represents you. And every time we try to fit into the mold, I will go to radio <laughs> stations and play them records. Then they will hear my voice and they will be like, Chris. Because I can do records that I ain't got no accent. Oh, wow. I can do records where you think is an American singing it. There's no accent. And when I do those records, you can see the disappointment in their faces. Like, why would you do that? You like, yeah. your talking voice is what we love. Then you give me a record that sounds like everybody else. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, but we need to do something that's just me. Right. And see where it goes. But you know what? What we need to do is fine tune it and present it in a way, in a good package to people wow. where they say, okay, cool. So when a lot of people think of Jamaica, they think aggression. They think wow. of, you know, just different things that's kind of negative. And I was like, no, I'm going to do it in a way where I package it the right way. And people can appreciate it no matter how old you are, no matter where you're from. That's amazing. Now, kind of going off of what you were saying about fitting in, so what do you think about people like Iggy, who changes her whole accent and, you know, to yeah, another I mean, accent? Yeah. To I don't, I don't, I think she should embrace, I think she being from where she's from, she should embrace that more. Because she will not only get the backing of where she's from, but people respect her for having the backbone to do so. Yeah. Because I can tell you, for me being in this position now, it did not happen overnight. Mm -hmm. It had to be something that we worked on, we worked on for years. But people now know when they see me, what they say, yes, 
the queen of dusty pop because i've been pushing that in people's head for years mm-hmm. you understand i'm not and i'm not like anybody else nor i want to be but i respect them mm-hmm. for but i think she should embrace that culture more yeah. that will make her stand up more wow so i always wanted to know like the real of the business like what do you think about and is it real that people are really selling their souls and doing what they have to do to try and get to the top and be where they want to be i mean i hear it all the time men on men and just all you know what? There, a lot of stuff goes on i don't think just in the music business mm-hmm. it happens in the corporate world it mm-hmm. happens on everything when you're trying to be on the up and up in, in any game in life you know I've been doing it 13 years. Why? Because I didn't sell my soul. Mm -hmm. I probably would have made it in the first year. Mm -hmm. But, and all of that's been presented to me as a woman, slightly attractive, you you gotta do, no, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) So I feel the need of, that's why I always tell young artists, especially females, make sure you surround yourself with people that you trust. Mm -hmm. You understand? People that give it to you real because there are sharks out there like that. But what it has done for me, it, it kind of builds up a, a, a defense mechanism where my team is so strong around me and I love them and I trust them because they were there for me when I didn't have nothing to give. You understand? So I know they're there just for me. So when you have people like that around you, they will kind of block all that BS. That, that, that. It gonna come, and it, and it still comes to me every day, but mm-hmm. they know that that, they, that don't work with me. Mm-hmm. You understand? Because I've been doing it for so long without that. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, I've reached to this point without that. So <laughs> that shows me I don't need to do that. But, yeah. you know, in every field, you're going to have that. Right. It's sad, especially for a woman. Yeah, because, I mean, it's a male-dominated industry. I mean, just what I do, I'm on a smaller scale, and, I mean, I get it. You know, people yeah, I interview every, and stuff every, like that. Yeah, yeah. No it's matter what like, you do. It's terrible, though. It's just exactly. like, you know, everybody's not like that. Yeah. And, th- and, and, and it does put like they look on you crazy like mm-hmm. if you don't do that they say you're a bitch which yeah. is which is crazy like i'm professional so right. i'm a b mm-hmm. are you kidding me that's what they're used to. yeah so that's why i did a record murder them just to kill a competition make people know you can't mess with me like hey. that you understand <laughs> <laughs> i'm giving it to you real i'm giving it to you real that's just what it is you know like the, I, I don't like the fact that it brings on negativity to the woman that will stand their ground. Mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't mean I'm a B. It just means I'm very professional right. and I'm not going to stand for anything because I believe in my talent. I think my talent is bigger than sleeping with somebody to make it, mm-hmm. you know, or doing whatever just because of that. Yeah, I totally agree. Now, we we have the dances here. We got the dabbing. I'm sure you seen the dab. We got the... Hey, yeah. the Millie Rock. <laughs> we got the hit em folks now. Yeah, yeah. What are the dances over there in Jamaica? Do you have anything that everybody's doing? And and you're not, you know what? I'm so kind of out of the loop with what's going on now because I don't know if you know culturally in Jamaica. Mm-hmm the music and dances move very, very quickly. Like, yeah. people produce records. If you don't produce, as an artist, 10 songs a week, you're dead. If you don't produce, like, dance moves. So I'm kind of out of the loop when it comes to the dance moves because every time I check YouTube just to keep up to date, the next day there's a whole bunch of new ones. So the, on, the before I left Jamaica, the ones that were still kind of hot was, like, the, the Dutty Wine where people always breaking the necks every second. Then the, um, I'm trying to bring back the old school stuff, though, like the Bogle. Yes, and the butterfly, because those are classics. Big up to Bogle. I knew him personally who created those dance moves. Wow. But he passed on, so rest in peace. But I'm big up to his family and everything. But um, I want to bring back that, That's the old crazy. school stuff. Oh, my gosh, yes. I was doing that earlier today. Yes, yeah, see the Bogle. You got to get it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. Okay, so wrapping up. You know I got to hear your voice. We want to hear your voice live. Yeah, yeah. For the people who wasn't at the concert, for people who haven't heard you, let's give them a little snippet. When Chris Kelly step off, the girl them off a step off. Tick, tick, tick up, blocks in the jet top. The whole of them a watch me, a watch how me moving. Real gully guys, I love the way my grooving. Must need advance for pursue your plan. You blind or something, this a mosquito pants. If me put it on your boy, oh, I got really know. Real yard party, I'm enough for free for show. Sure. Ooh, I love it, that yeah. accent, man. Accent, man. <laughs> now, how do you say hater? But you know but what? Isn't that a word that you all use for yeah, that? Bad mind. Bad mind. Yeah, it means when you're bad minded, it means you're a hater. So it's okay. either say you're a hater or you're just bad mind. Bad mind. Yeah, I need to put that in my vocabulary. I have a lot bad of those. Mind. Bad mind. <laughs> <laughs> the better you do in life, you're going to have bad-minded people. Yes, you, child, tell me about it. <laughs> so what's up with the social media? Plug all that for your fans. Yeah, I want all my warriors. Make sure y'all follow me on 
Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at Chris Kelly, K R I S K E L L I. Also, if you don't get it, there's no excuse. My EP is out, Third World Problem. Make sure you get it. 3RD World Problem is everywhere, man. I'm telling you, it's on iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Apple Music, Tidal, everywhere. There's no excuse, okay? We're here on the Floor Tree Reunion Tour. So make sure y'all check out what city I'm going to be in next because guess what? Every show is sold out. But I'm giving y'all the opportunity to win two tickets in each city. Y'all just got to check it out where I'll be next. Y'all got the opportunity to win two tickets to come chill with me backstage, meet Floetry, and just hang with me backstage, watch the performance, get two tickets to come in for free. You understand? The only thing you got to do is buy the EP Third World Problem, take a picture of it, post it online, tag me in it, and I'll contact you at noon when, when I'm in your city. Also, another plug, right? I want y'all to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Chris Kelly TV, to make sure y'all see everything that we got going on on the tour. Because, you know, like, y'all need to see not just what's on stage. Y'all need to see, like, behind-the-scenes stuff. So subscribe to the YouTube channel, Chris Kelly TV. Boom! That is amazing. And, y'all, I personally know that she is giving away those tickets because yeah. I seen it today. Yeah. I seen it. <laughs> I seen it on IG, so don't think it's a game. Yeah, it's but I appreciate you, Miss Chris you. Kelly. Everybody, there you have it.